so we've got the motor pulled off the Milford Whetstone grinder that I picked up today. It's two horsepower, 415 volt, 50 hertz, three phase motor. This isn't dual voltage. So the plan was hoping, shall I say, it was dual voltage and then I could use it on one of these VFD inverters that you get off of eBay. These are about 90 quid and this takes a 240 volt three phase input and puts it into a 240 volt one phase output so that's what i've got on the bridge port over here on the motor plate funny enough for this one didn't go back on the machine because i couldn't find any suitable rivets for it and i have got it here somewhere and I will show you it, but he says he's got it in the 10 ton of mess typically that is up here. Anybody else have a toolbox like this where the top just becomes too central? I thought to myself that I'd actually put it in one of these to one side. Funny enough, so I didn't lose it. Did you know what I found? Lost it. Never mind. We ain't using it anyway. That's why I can't find it, so I can't show you. It's a scrap that last two minutes of video because it's all gone pear shaped. That's going to bug me now. What do I do with it? Where is it? Nah, it's racks me. I have no idea. Where would I have put that? I don't even know. I do not even know. Um, it's not even important to be fair. It's not even to do this video. But now, it caught me off guard and I want to find it. I'm sure I had it in here. Obviously, I just looked in here and I ain't gonna find, I ain't gonna be there again, but. Right, never mind. Never mind, let's jam all the took back in there. And it can stay. This is definitely getting sorted out soon. Without a shadow of a doubt. Hey, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Here we go, here we go. So this is the plate that was on the um, bridge port. It was black, but it was caked and I cleaned it up and it took the paint off. So the same thing there, you can say the voltage, you can do 210 volt or 420 volt. So that is a dual voltage motor. So we didn't have to pull the star out of that or mess around. We just configured it. As per these little diagrams here, you've got, you're probably not going to pick that up very well on the camera, but you've got high voltage there and low voltage on there showing you how to connect them up. And then, yeah, then you can use one of these. So what I've done with this one is I've opened it up and I've put the pairs together because I found the star point. Now we've done a continuity test and we found one pair, two pair, three pairs, so six wires, and we've done a resistance test, and we've got the same resistance in all three pairs. So that just shows us that you know, we've got no breaks in the windings, which is good. The thing's caked in crud, so it's not seen the light of day, probably since it was built. And we've got a bit of a crunchy bearing in there, so I'll take that out and I'll do the same on the other side. Then we'll get these clipped back, soldered up, bring three new wires out, and we'll get it hooked up to the VFD, and then we're good to go. We can uh, look at getting the thing put back together once we've got a couple of new belts. I'm not gonna go mad and paint everything on this one. We're just gonna get it working nice, get it running nice, and get it ready to use. I'll bring you back later on, and I'll show you what we've done. So you've got the end cover off the motor here, because what we're gonna do, we took it off, and this bearing in there 
it isn't so smooth anymore. So for what they cost to replace, it's only a small bearing. We're gonna press that out and then I can get a new one in there ready for when that goes back on and I'll do the same with the other end of the motor. <coughs> We're gonna use the ratchet armor press because it's nice and simple and I've got a 32 mil impact socket there which fits perfect on the outer race of the bearing to push that out. So it's literally a two second job. And then it isn't going to take much to press this out and there we go simple one bearing ready to be measured up and I'll go online and I'll find a couple of new ones happy days night after a few adjustments and a good few goes we've had to move the legs up because we bottomed out on the threads here we run out of travel and we are now literally on the last knockings. We should only have about a dozen more turns to go and this should pop off. And then we'll be able to get that other bearing out and just check it, make sure we order the right ones and then we can put it to one side until the bearings turn up and we put it back together. Definitely getting loose up. And I think it's gonna be any second now. Try and make sure I don't drop everything when it comes off. There we go. Drop the socket, that's not too bad. We can work with that. So let's put the puller down. And there she is. There's the pulley removed. The keyway's still in there. And then we got the shaft here. We just moved the camera out. And there we go. We can get that cleaned up a bit and make that a little bit easier to go on. So now we've got to take these screws out, lift the cover off and press that out and see what size that bearing is. It would probably be the same as the other one, but it's nice to just double check before ordering a pair and finding out one of them's wrong. So let's get that in the press. So we've got it set up in the press. That was the bearing out the backside of the motor. And as you can see, it is a different size because we got a one inch keyway shaft on there. So that's a bigger bearing. So it's lucky you just didn't order two because before I didn't think of getting in the gap and measuring the shaft. So we've got to take that out and order the two different size bearings. So we'll press this out now. And what I'm gonna do is gonna wedge this under there. Not ideal, but it works. We'll press this out. I'm gonna use a bit of alley just over the top of that. Like that. And then there we go. Not taking much to get that out of there. Let's see if I can wiggle that down. Just don't want it to drop. So that's now sat, it's actually just resting now on the fan blades underneath. So I can lift this cover off. There's the bearing pressed out of there. I'll clean all that crud up. And then there we have the bearing on there. So now, because that didn't stay in the housing, because the housing itself isn't recessed, the houses on these on both sides are just 
machined the same idea all the way through so the bearing comes out with it and the plates that screw on here keep the bearing in place so I've now got to get that bearing off that shaft makes it a bit more of a pain but let's look into getting that done so here's the fan off the motor this is what I broke stupidly enough I was trying to push a bit of clearance to get under the bearing and I thought I'd try and use this and I was worried and what happened I was worried about happened it cracked so my own fault shouldn't have done it should have known better but now we've got to fix it so we've cleaned it up and you can see the crack in the casting there and it's gonna weld like shit to be fair because it's ancient, it's filthy, it's embedded with dirt. I've cleaned it as best I can by blasting it, but I'm not going to the effort of going to get it blasted anywhere. So we'll maybe die grind a little bit out where we need to, and we ain't got to go mad with it because it is only a fan at the end of the day, and it ain't got to be solid. There's nothing on it. I just don't want that getting any worse. So get it back in place ain't gonna take much and we'll just weld that up I'll show you when it's done so this is the motor from the Milford Whetstone Grinder. This is the one that was a 415, that's upside down on there, but it's a 415. It was single voltage, 50 hertz, three phase motor, and we've pulled it apart like I've done on a couple of others there. That can be done, you just gotta be careful. When you take the motor out and you find the windings, there's three wires coming out of here, which is your three phases. Now, if you're lucky, you can pull apart the strings that are attached in here that are normally brittle and broken up and you can find the star point of this motor where the other end of the three phases are all joined as one which is called the star now if you can find that and you can pull it apart then you can open them up and separate them and now you'll have six wires and what you want to do is you want to test them with your meter and you'll find the start and end of each pair of wires so you'll have one matching pair two matching pairs three matching pairs and then once you've got them on them pairs you want to check the resistance now I'm not really up on all this stuff but all I know is that as long as the resistance is the same across all three pairs then you're good to go and there should be no shorts or breaks in the wires which means fingers crossed it will work that's if the motor's not dead in general because I've not checked this one and I couldn't check it before I started so we pulled the star point, we matched up our wires, and then we paired them up as needed. Um, I did myself a little sketch here. So you've got U, V, and W, and this is how you pair them up. So U1, W2, V1, U2, W1, V2, and then they come out as your main UVW or T1, T2, T3 which are now here. So the solder joints are in here. That's Raychem DR25 heat shrink, which is a high temperature heat shrink. We use it on motorsport looms and things like that. Um, there it is there. So they're all nicely soldered up and protected and they're tucked down so they're not gonna get caught in the motor. And then this will come out of the casing and I'll put that into a three-way or four-way because I'll put the earth on the casing four-way distribution block and then that will go into our VFD here so this is 220 volt three phase um, output from a 240 volt single phase input so there we have it we'll use one of these I run one on the bridge port there and I also run one on the Harrison M300 and they work perfect so you've got no problems with that at all so if you look under here 
you can see your RS and your T and then your UVW which goes out to your motor so there we have it so we just have the input on the RS and the T or we'll only be using two of them because we got live neutral and then the earth point and then the motor will go out as UVW and the earth and then you've got different ones here if you're putting different switches on for variable speed potentiometers and things like that but for what I want on this one I'm not going to be using it and if you really wanted to you can use this on the front here and you start and stop but I'm probably going to wire this up so I used the original switches on the machine because although you've got all these little gubbins and gadgets on these VFDs I quite like the machine looking exactly as it would have done when it was new I prefer the uh, retro look with the new age gubbins hidden away so yeah we'll get this motor put back together with new bearings we've got new bearings here we've got a line so these are the motor bearings for the spindle that i just had it and then these two larger ones are the actual bearings for the double spindle on the grinding wheels so we'll replace all of them get the motor back up and then i'll do you a quick video when we're testing the motor see if it all works fingers crossed we're all good to go See you then. Right, I'm going to press this bearing on on the motor there just on the top this is the new one I've gone for sealed bearings this time around and we're just going to use this impact socket because you always want to make sure if you're putting the bearing on you only want to drive it on the inner race down so you don't do no damage to the actual bearing setup itself and if you're pushing them out you only ever want to push it out on the outer race obviously going out doesn't matter as much as going in so if we lower it down onto there, it's not going to take much to be fair. There you go, we're there, didn't even use the handle. This press has got a nice bit of grunt. So you don't have to worry too much about things like that. Little jobs like this, quick and simple. So yeah, there's that bearing on. Put this down there. So that one's on nicely. Nothing else goes on this shaft. We've just got this end case. We cleaned up the insides of these little wire brush and a clear out with the airline and we did the same on the other case so that's nice and clear here's the fan that come off my confession is I broke it you can see that crack there and you can see the crack on the inside there or better from that point so I've got that crack and that crack so I've got to clean them up and give that a little well well, we've got the top bearing here to go back on the shaft. This is the keyway end, which the 2V pulley goes on. So we've got to press this down the shaft and just get it flush with this housing so the cap can go back on. Or actually, about a mil and a half down so we can have a little seal, dirt seal that goes on. It's not so important now because the bearings I'm using are sealed. I just thought for what it is, it's easier to get sealed bearings. Um, so we want to push down but only on this inner race if you push on the outer race you've got a good chance you're going to damage the bearing so what we've got is i've got lots of this little tube section this is sort of a roll cage tubing chassis tubing 
but I have loads of offcuts and that is the perfect fit for the RD and the outside diameter there to match that race. So then we can just drop that down, lower the arbor, and then it takes literally no effort at all to get that down into there. And then just gently press that in. And we wanna go, I'll show you the seal that needs to go on there or that came off of it. So I'm gonna put it back just there. That's all that is to sit over the top. So I'll just press that down ever so slightly. I'd say about there should be good. Let's have a look. Perfect. Now that can sit in there. We'll get the mounting plate. Which is just this cap with four slotted screws. Sits over the top. Over the top there. These might not be perfectly central, so I might have to clock it just to get them to go in, which I think has done the trick. Yep, yeah, we're in. And one more on the back there and that's the cover and that shaft fitted nip them down so that's our motor redone taken apart good clean up new bearings uh, sealed bearings this time around which make it a little bit better so that's always good so we'll go ahead and we'll put the pulley back on now here's the pulley we gave it a quick clean up on the id just to get rid of some of the crud and there's the keyway that we also gave a quick clean up because it had mushroomed out a bit on the end where it had been pressed in now the shaft is a really nice fit so that shouldn't be a problem when i took it off it was level around there so that's what we're going back for so just as a gauge pretty much I'm gonna rest that file just under that side and I know the keyway goes that way because of the mark from the grub screw so I'll put that there and then we're just gonna lightly Press the key down into there, no effort with the press. So that saves us whacking it around with a hammer. And then I'll just find the Allen key I want. Uh, which is an Imperial Allen key. And we just put this set screw into that threaded hole there. There we go. Get it in there. We'll just use this here to make sure that's nice and tight. And we'll slide that. And there we go. One motor, redone, rewired, new bearings, good to go. So I suppose the next stage is, let's plug it into the inverter and we'll, uh, we'll see if she actually works after all this.
see you in a second right so we've um we've got the motor rewired and we're going to test it now on the vfd so this is the first test you're going to see so i don't know if it works if it doesn't you're going to find out at the same time as me but fingers crossed there's no reason why it shouldn't from what i can tell from what we tested so i'll show you now we've got the hunyang ebay vfd these are about 80 90 quid as said before i use them on the harrison m300 lathe which has got a three horsepower motor and i'm using them on the bridgeport this is a one and a half horsepower motor i use it on that as well and i had this one spare because i tend to keep one um here if i can purely because sometimes it takes two or three weeks to get older one and you might want it sooner so for what they cost i ordered an extra one last time there's the motor the casing's back on pulleys back on new bearings looks good nice and quiet obviously we welded up the fan blade inside refitted everything so i'll just get you steadied up there and i'll turn this on at the mains so this is just plug the envira 240 volt 13 amp plug socket just normal domestic uk socket takes a few seconds for these to come on and there you see it's powered up now i've gone through the settings in the book which is here because it comes with a list um, of the parameters that you have to set now there's quite a few here if anyone wants to know or is not too sure you could always go in the comments and i could let you know but there's only about five or six basic ones five or six sorry basic ones that you need to have set just to get the motor running obviously if you start going into um, some of the other controls and remote controls then you can be needing to play around with it a bit longer to set but for the purpose of this demonstration i'm just going to run it off this pad here when the machine's put back together i'll try and well I, I will be able to get it set up i'll use some of these terminals here these smaller ones and i'll get it powered up so that the original start stop switch um, works as it should rather than having this there i think that's the way i'm going to go about it so there you have the vfd flashing and if we hit run we should it should kick in straight away because we've got it set to 50 hertz to start and the start time to full speed is half a second you can set them to ramp up and ramp down nice and slow but the vfd can handle it the motor can handle it so i don't see the point i'd rather it just come on as it would if it was powered three phase direct from when it was new so here we go and look at that there she is so it might be a bit more difficult for you to tell see if you can get around here more let's just stop it again i don't know how clear it is on the camera about that fully turning but once it's at full speed i'm guessing you can't see too much but you can see there that that's turning and we've currently got it I'm trying to think how the motor's going to be mounted the belts would turn that's the correct way so you can reverse on these and go the other way but i don't need to so that can stay as it is so and again silent so we've got the new bearings in there might be a tiny tiny vibration from that fan that i split the cast alley one that broke but nothing that's going to cause that any grief so there we have it that's how you get a three phase 415 volt motor and you pull the star you rewire it and then you can use it off of a vfd at 223 phase so i've done this on a few of my machines now and it's definitely doable some people say you can't pull the star out you can't mess with it you'll damage the windings if you're careful it can be done so yeah that's that side of it done let's stop that and then i'm just going to show you a couple more things here if i just put the camera over here more it's one of the shafts we cleaned up this one is only the pin that's knocked through the casting 
and the plate which the motor mounts on actually pivots on this pin and then you have a bolt at the top and a bolt at the bottom to push that plate in or out to put tension on the belts you'll understand more when I, I do a video when it's going back together so that pin's all cleaned up this is the pulley this is the top two groove pulley to match our other one here so that's at the base of the machine this is at the top and goes on the spindle here so we take off this left hand nut the pulley was a nightmare to get off of here so I chucked this whole thing in the lathe and I just used a bit of emery cloth and then also some scotch bright pads to just clean it up and then I did actually take a very fine cut here where the two set screws go because it had burred up a little bit but now as you can see it does actually go that way around there perfect so that's ready to go back in and I'm waiting for two drive belts as we got the new bearings these are the new bearings for the shaft one of them you can just see a shoulder there one bearing sits up against that shoulder and one sits up against this larger shoulder here so we can fit them new bearings these are not sealed bearings because it actually has a greaseway which comes in so you can re-grease these so we didn't get sealed bearings on these but they're ready to go that's good to go back in the motors now working so we know that that's good so yeah we just wait for the belts and then we can put it back together I look forward to getting it up and running and then I can show you it all done and working properly we'll see you on the next video thanks for watching